Peter, what a thrill to be able to talk to you today. How Thanks are so you? Much. I'm very well. I uh, I uh, can't believe, uh, we, you know, I've got my shots and I've gotten through a year and a half of this lunacy. Yes. And uh, other than that, I'm, I'm uh, you know, it's May 1st and uh, I should be dancing around a pole somewhere. <laughs> it's actually June 1st. <laughs> oh, that's right. Today's June 1st. Maybe I shouldn't speak about how well I got through this pandemic. I forgot. Yes, it's June 1st. I, listen, I can totally relate. I don't know what day it is or what time it is. It's all good. But all I know is I'm here with you right now. So thank you for your time. Um, and you're in Chicago? I'm in Toronto. Oh, Toronto. Yes. Why do I think Chicago? That's okay. That, we're, they're both great cities. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, so much to talk to you today about. So, okay, Very let's good. get started. Uh, crossing Delancey, of course. Um, wow. First of all, I can't even believe it's, it's just over 30 years old, that film, because I remember watching it like yesterday. Um, and, you know, I watched it again last week just to kind of catch myself up because it had been a while. And you know what? That film still holds up. What do you think? Yeah, does, I, I agree. I think it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a story that has been told generation over generation, uh, not just amongst Jews, but I mean, the idea of, of, of how do you make the right choice is an eternal question. Yeah. And uh, what the origins of your tribe are and how we flee from them only be to remind it that there are actually values there that are worth uh, going back to. So it's a, it's a, a very universal story, I think. And I, I think that's it. it I agree with you. It, it, it's hard to know what's going to hold up. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. This one does. This one yeah. does. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say, I mean, we'll get into this a little bit in a few minutes, but I think most of the films, most of the things you've done still holds up. There's oh, no thank you. That's a very sweet compliment. No question about it. But the character that you play, of course, in this film, Sam Posner, um, you know, I think a lot of people really kind of globbed on, really related to him. And I understand when you, when you, you know, when the movie was released, you had a lot of uh, people hitting on you, a lot of ladies. On you. Uh, I've never been more propositioned in my life. <laughs> and it wasn't just people who were, you know, the right age. It was their moms. It was their <laughs> grandmothers. It was, and, and it was fascinating. It was really, that's when I, you know, it's not much different than anything else that succeeds nationally. Yeah. Because you can tell, uh, yeah, I, mean, I started in the theater. So the only people who stopped me were the people who saw the play. Right. So the odds were weirder. So it took a while to get used to the fact that I was actually working when I wasn't working. Yeah. You and know, this, the movie this, was playing or the TV show was playing. So. For sure. And, and as you say, I mean, this this did originate as a play. And I know that yeah. you were offered the role, but you were right. busy, you couldn't do it. So when you were offered it as a script, as a, uh, as a movie, you know, to do it as a movie, what? You know, what initially, does anything, did it, well, back then when you started your career, like, did it make you nervous? Did it scare, because you were, you were a theater guy. So now you're transitioning to, to film. Well, I was already, 88 was when, 87 was when we did this. So yeah, I'd already had 10 years of doing uh, films and stuff. Yeah. So what was rare about this was that it was an offer. But I had already worked with Joan on a movie called Chilly Scenes of Winter. Yes. Uh, so we'd known each other. And I do remember Susan writing me a postcard saying, I'm sorry you can't do the play, but maybe you'll do the movie. There you and of go. course, you know, that's just a postcard. Getting a movie made is really difficult. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, uh, if I remember correctly, Joan called me in June of 1987, uh, before anybody else was even attached. And uh, um, I can't remember how much I remembered of the play. Yeah. But Joan's a good, she's a good screenwriter, Joan Silva. Yes. And uh, she also, her other strong suit is casting. She's really brilliant about casting. Yeah. Now, I don't mean, just because of me, I, but I, she gets an amazing cast. Well, yes, the film did have an amazing cast and who didn't fall in love with Amy Irving in this movie? I mean, yeah, you well, have to have a stone cold heart. Did, <laughs> you guys, did you guys connect immediately? I mean, everybody was rooting for this couple. Yeah, I think, 
I think that we uh, I don't think I remember meeting Amy sometime in the 70s, probably before Animal House, 75, 76, 70, in, in and around there. Yeah. But we weren't friends. I mean, our paths didn't cross that much, but we obviously knew of each other. Right. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Chemistry is not a castable thing. Of course. Uh, you, get, you have to get lucky. And I think the relationship strength was in the script. Now, we had to, we had to connect with each other on a certain level, but you can't act chemistry. It's not, a, it's weirdly sui generis, if that's yeah. the right word, you know? Yeah. And then again, I think, I think you're right. This is an eternal story. You know, it's as old as, as the human story ever written down. And it's how do people in the midst of all of everything find each other, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I love it. I still love this movie. And I have to know, um, A, did you stink of pickles forever? And B, do you still eat pickles to this day? I had pickles for lunch today, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Uh, actually, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the device of using uh, vanilla. Oh, yeah. It's just a very, you know, it, it made it sensory. Right. And adding aroma to a movie or even a play it's you know how do you do that yeah I, i've been reading uh, louise penny's books recently i don't know if you know her she writes crime fiction yes i've heard yeah and her books are like littered with descriptions of food they're so mouth-watering but that you know so i think i think the pickle as an icon of uh Jewish menschness is oh. really clever. <laughs> oh, I'm with you. A good chopped liver sandwich with a pickle? Can't go, you can't go wrong. No, and have you tried a pickle on egg salad sandwich? I don't remember if I've done that. Okay, you got I do to. like adding pickles to lots of different sandwiches. Yeah, you've got to try it on the egg salad. You will never go back. <laughs> Thank you, I'll definitely uh, remember that one. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, now um, we have to talk Animal House. And sure. ironically, um, on Thursday, I'm going to have the pleasure of talking to Karen Allen, who is still a good pal of yours. Yeah. And it blows my mind that that film was both yours and hers first first movie. Well, I had done I had a, a, a silent uh, little part in a movie called Coma. Yes. That yes. Michael Douglas starred in. I and I did a couple of MASH episodes, but yes, for, for all intents and purposes, this was really my first film and lead character. So uh, actually I, I created a podcast this year. Uh, yes. And I interviewed Karen, you should listen. It's, she's brilliant in this podcast. I listened to the whole thing yesterday. Oh, I did, yeah. I found it, Vocal Heroes. First of all, it's a great podcast, so Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Um, it's really great and it gave me insight into Karen that I had no idea. I know, I, mean, I totally agree. Wow, uh, that story about the guy with the typewriter and that is a movie. I, well, I think I say in the interview, if anybody's listening to this, yes. Karen and I can definitely play these two characters. But I agree with you, I, 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 you know, Karen and I have stayed friends and I thought it was revelatory because yeah. it wasn't about fame. No. It was about how did this shy person become an international movie star? Yeah. It's breathtakingly insightful. And, uh, you know, I did six other interviews with people talking about how they came to their lives. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, my wife, Cornelia, uh, who writes crime fiction, she came up with the title. It's great. Originally, yeah, uh, it's memorable and it is really what the podcast is about, is yeah. how do you find your voice and the courage it takes to, to say, this is who I am. Oh, you have a lot of people you can, you can peg on for this. I think it's a great concept and I, I enjoyed listening to it. Yeah. So, yeah, um, and which brings us to, Local hero again, one of my all time favorite thank films. You, thank you. Can you, are you still kind of pinching yourself and thinking about? I worked with Burt Lancaster. 
you know, I, I, uh, I don't, I, I wouldn't say I pinch myself, but whenever anybody's uh, complimenting me or reminding me why they love that movie, uh, it's very much like Crossing the Land Sea or even Animal House for that matter. Yeah. You never know, at least from my point of view as an actor, you never know the project you're working on and how much impact. I don't mean in terms of the size of the audience because everybody has a reason I'm, I'm a fan first. I have very obscure things and very popular things yeah. that mean a lot to me. So Burt Lancaster was a big deal because he was a big deal in my in my life. He was right. my folks got a television in 1952 or three, and I didn't even know what a television was. I mean, my memory was my father saying, "We're going to watch this thing we just got, which is a television." And I said, yeah. "What's a television?" And he said, oh, it's a radio with pictures. You know, I'm, what does a five-year-old know? Of and course. the first thing we watched, if, if I um, have it right, was a variety show. Not the Ed Sullivan show, but maybe something like that. And there was uh, a black actor doing an impression of Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas arguing with each other. Wow. And they were two enormous stars in the 50s, you know. Yeah. And the black actor was Sammy Davis Jr. Wow. So it was all this bizarre, you know, that's the memory of, I didn't know who Burt Lancaster was and not. I didn't know why it was funny. But over the years, uh, I would see him on something called Million Dollar Movie and some of his Crimson Pirate movies. And then as I was maturing, I was seeing him in, in some of his more famous films. And then I learned that he was one of the earliest actors to have his own production company. So by the time I worked with him, I, you know, I was playing a character who was in awe of his boss. So I didn't have to do any work at all. Because That's amazing, was amazing. Yeah, so, so just to wrap it up, what are we gonna see you in next? You've done so much stuff and, and are you gonna do Succession? I did two episodes of Succession for uh, season three. Yes. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly uh, if the character continues into season four because they're just finishing season three. Right. But I worked mostly with Jamie Cromwell and uh, oh, I forget the young actor's name. He's really brilliant. Uh, uh, Corey Culkin? No, 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 no. There's another, the youngest one. The oh, next um, one. yeah, yeah. I'm blanking as well. But yes, I know exactly. Yeah. Make it sound like I remember. Yeah, I remember too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that that may have more to go. Uh, I'm just about to have a phone call with my agent about it and my manager about a new offer. I wish I could tell you about it, but I can't because That's it's okay. not a done deal. Yeah. And I'm putting together season two for uh, Vocal Heroes. So uh, that that actually became a very invaluable passion in the midst of this pandemic. Yeah because we started recording uh, probably January 3rd. Right. And, uh, you know, I'd never done it before, but I've always jumped into things without having any experience. So it became a real respite. It was fascinating. A young woman uh, named Lila Newman was my uh, editor. Cornelia helped me put her, uh, the. The, the website together, you know, it was like actually writing, directing, producing, acting. Yeah. So those are the three next things that are, will show up. Fantastic. Well, like I said, yeah, I love the podcast. You're, you're a natural. There's no question. I'm, I was not surprised. You did a great job. You're doing well, it was job. fun to talk to all these people, you know, yeah. I mean, I, there was, I had a chunk of months where I hadn't been working and a friend of mine said, what do you miss? And I said, I missed the conversation. Yes. And that's where the, the podcast came from. Because I was down in, I think it was Fort Lauderdale at a film festival with Karen. And we were having dinner. And I told her, I'm you know, thinking about doing this. And she said, what would it be like? I said, it would be like this. Would you be interested in doing it? She said, yeah. yeah. And I, to me, it was the idea of a uh, a, a dinner party with six, seven really interesting people. And of course you can't, you can only talk to one person at a time. Yeah. Originally I was going to call it the Emmis, which is Yiddish for truth. Yes, I know. Uh, oh yeah. yes, I figured. 
And, <laughs> I, and my wife, Cornelia, said, it's a great title, but you'll be spending half the time explaining what it means to people who don't know the word. For sure. So, yeah. And she, like I said, she writes crime fiction. It's got a, so, so vocal heroes couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Well, listen, yeah. there, so are you, is the, has the festival started already? It's just starting this week. And, and I know that oh. Crossing Delancey has a special uh, screening. Yeah, on the uh, eight, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we look forward to that. Uh, yeah. But listen, thank you so much for your time. And oh, like pleasure. I say, such a huge fan. What a, what a thrill to talk to you today. Thank I'm, you. I'm uh, absolutely flattered. And uh, it's two o'clock here, like it is in Toronto. So you definitely sent the afternoon off on a good note. Oh, thank you so much. And when, when the borders are open, please come back to Toronto so we can continue. And, and you know, if you need a guest or, you know, a co-producer or whatever, I, I'm there for you. I, I, all, everything is written down. I really appreciate that. Actually, the last time I was in at the film festival. Yes, was a couple years for, ago. Yeah, the way it was for- uh, American uh, Pastoral. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, what? it's, I, this is my 51st year I'm doing it. It really blows my mind that I still get to do it. Amazing. Well, keep yeah. up the great work. We love you, you. And uh, just have yourself a wonderful rest of your day to day. And remember pickles on egg salad. Pickles and egg salad. Let me yeah. make a note of that. So yeah. I on a bagel, pickles. a nice toasted bagel. I think I, I don't know how many bagels I can eat anymore because it's like I might as well add seven pounds. To I know. Egg. OK, it's good on a cracker. It's good on anything. Don't worry about it. Oh, no, I'll believe me. If pickles <laughs> add to an egg salad sandwich, I will name it after you. I love it. Peter, thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it. Take my, care. My great okay. pleasure. Bye bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.